Hey folks, it is a Thursday, but I'm actually off from my regular job today. I am going to take this opportunity to do a video that I've been itching to do for the last year and a half. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware, but many of the riders in the EUC community actually do deliveries on the side. So I'm super fascinated by the whole idea of earning a living on the electric unicycle. It is cold. It's 41 degrees, only going to get colder from here on out. So if I don't do this video now, It'll be another year before I can make the content that I want to make. Now the time is 10.50. I will be in the city for the lunchtime rush. Now I was told by Dean that the best way to do this is to treat it like, well, a job. You really need to set up a quota for yourself. My quota for the day is $150. You already know how I set this wheel up. Added the GoPro on the front just in case. Um, and then the other slight modification that I've made. It's very easily removable. I have an adapter right over here. Uh, but this idea came from Jose. Shout out to Supreme Burrito on Instagram. So we are in Manhattan now. We just came off of the Queensboro Bridge, uh, which means that we are going to turn on the app now. It's Uber driver. I'll take a photo of myself. Uh, starting with zero dollars right now. Let's press go. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's it. That should be it. So it says finding trips down here. You're online. And oh, this is not bad. Yeah, fuck it. We'll try that. It looks pretty close. It's very exciting, first delivery of the day. It's uh, probably coffee, it's from Starbucks. But yeah, we're uh, taking the bike lane. No shame in that. Okay, one more left turn on Broadway. Yes, right there. See that Starbucks? That's where we need to go. Jacqueline is here, right? I'm uh, here for a pickup. All right, man, thank you. Okay, so we have our first delivery pickup right here for Jacqueline. First delivery of the day. We're making a right on 35th Street right here. Slow and steady, you know? I know guys who do deliveries, they're rushing from point A to point B. They'll go like 35, 40, 45 miles an hour in the city with food. This is Manhattan traffic right here. I'm like, here's asking for trouble. It's worth it to just slow down a little bit than to uh, risk injury and spending thousands of dollars on medical bills and another thousand repairing your wheel. I mean, what's the point of doing this gig if that's the way you're gonna play it? Look at this, look at this. Look at these, this road, Jesus. All right, so this right here is the Eugene, right at the corner of Hudson Yards. Order for Jacqueline. We're here. Yeah, it's a newly built skyscraper, fancy place. Okay, and that was that. First trip officially completed. I just got the payout, it's $4.50. The tip comes in later, maybe, who knows. All right, on to the next one. We just received our second order of the day. It's from a Chinese restaurant, 0.4 miles. Pretty close, it's for $6.51. Tipsy Shanghai noodles. Yeah, for a pickup. For Winnie? Thank you, have a good day. I'm coming, Winnie. Look at that, we're passing uh, Penn Station. It's kind of cool to see all these landmarks while you're just dropping off and picking up. It's like being a tourist and working at the same time. Keeps it interesting. Passing Times Square right now, where all the movie theaters and shows are, Broadway shows. There's Lion King, AMC. The uh, drop-off point for Winnie. It's actually right across the street, Whole Foods. Okay, so I just delivered. That's her right over there. 12.34, we're right in the middle of the lunch rush here. Lanjo noodle. That's the one, okay, thank you. I don't know, the gig is pretty enjoyable so far. This just to me is like riding, but you get paid. And it kind of feels a little bit like GTA. You get missions, 10 minutes, point A to point B. Now granted, I don't know what the payout is like. And all of that, of course, is affected by seniority, how many deliveries you have, what your history is. I'm a noob, so the better Drop-offs are uh, going to people with more history with uh, Uber Eats. I think it's here. It has to be here. Hi, do you know where 450 is? It's like 
No? Yeah, I've been circling this place for like 10 minutes trying to find. It's goddamn impossible. This is crazy. I'm looking for 450. The over there? Okay, thank you. Jesus Christ. It's across the street. Man, it's a waste of time. All right, we're here finally. It's a fancy spot, but oh boy, am I glad that one's done. It's uh, already 117, so that thing took well over 30 minutes to earn $7. Not great. I'm sure somebody like Dean would be like, oh yeah, I know that building. I know the doorman. There's a tunnel underneath that'll let me get there. It's like a shortcut. But for me, it's like, where? Where? What building is what? All right, next pickup spot is from a wine store. Amsterdam wine, I think that's it. Hello. Anthony, yes. We got our wine downtown, 19th Street and 1st Avenue. You can see the Empire State Building in the distance right over there. That is the Flatiron Building. It's the infamous triangular building that popularized the idea of extrusions in uh, architectural design. So one of the coolest things that has happened in New York since the pandemic is uh, a lot more street closures like this, allocating more space for bicycles and pedestrians. Stairs are your worst enemy. How's your day going? It's Pretty good. Awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Appreciate it. All right. But yeah, let's look at the metrics for a second. Right now it's 144. So it's been like two hours. I've made $33.94, slightly above minimum wage. Not great. <laughs> but that's like first day on the job. If the earnings only go up from here, then it wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, well, this is HQ right here, Kung Fu Tea. It's been the home base for the last five years. Holy Jesus. Oh shit, yeah, 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 yeah. $14.83. And to What? That's the biggest one so far. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. We gotta do this. Hi, I'm here for a pickup. The wheel is still there, yes. Here is the pickup for Stevie. All right, this is Houston and Broadway. As you guys know, Manhattan is gridded. Every street has a number, but we're in the part of Manhattan that doesn't have a number. The Dutch came over and colonized Manhattan from the south to the north. And so this entire section of Manhattan is the way it is because the streets essentially follow the original layout before the grid system was introduced. One of my favorite buildings in New York City. That's the Cooper Union building by Morphosis. Oh, nice, okay, so that's 56 Leonard in the business we call the Jenga building. What's cool about that sculpture down there, Anish Kapoor sculpture, he's known for making these kind of massive sculptures like the Bean in Chicago. And I always wonder like, what's in it? I happen to see the construction of this particular blob that he made. So it's just a layer of very thin stainless steel. The rest of it is just wooden formwork. Okay, I didn't want to scream too loudly and you fall off or something. Oh, thank you so much. Dropped off, that's delivered. That was cool, she waved me down, which saved a lot of time. 40 bucks now. Average is going up. See, why do they do this? After a good delivery like that, $3.60 delivery. No, let me cancel that shit. Oh, but while we're here, let me show you guys something else that's really cool that not many people know about. So New York City is known for its museums, obviously. What people don't know is there are museums hidden all over the place. That's Broadway over there, Lafayette. And so in between the two blocks, you have this small avenue. This is what I want to show you guys. See this door? This is actually a museum. It's called the Mmm Museum. And see, there's a display area on the inside. Looks to be like a lot of hand sculptures, Holy Bible. Ain't that cool? It's like a rotating museum and different art shows happen here. Like a cabinet of curiosity type thing. They're all small, they're very interesting, very intricate. Now let us hope that the next delivery comes along. Back at Houston. I would say so far my biggest complaint is that my shoulders hurt just from carrying the backpack. I think it's more physically intensive than I imagined. 
Hi, I'm picking up for Nicholas. So this is food from Mamoon. Total, it should be like 14 bucks. Okay, we are arriving at West Side Highway. So the cool thing here is that you don't have to contend with actual traffic. But the bad thing is technically, you're not allowed to have any sort of motorized vehicle on here. You could get ticketed, you could get fined. I try to be as safe and considerate as possible when I'm riding these things. So I'm trying to rationalize that. Hopefully that'll set a good example and they won't bug me too much. Okay, okay, so we're about to pass the ugliest building in New York City. It's designed by a Stark architect. See that building over there? That's made out of fucking windows. How ugly is that? I think they missed the boat on that one. Looks like deconstructivist bullshit, to be honest. Oh my god, what are the chances? <laughs> Delivering food to the building I hate most. Hey, how are you? Delivery for Ray? All the way back, right? You got a garden, indoor garden, a lounge, spiral staircase. Holy crap. This is for the super wealthy, dude. That was funny. I was like, oh, dude, this building looks so nice. But the doorman's like, no, it's a piece of shit. It's got all kinds of problems. They rushed this building. Thank you so much. Have a good night. What do all these people do to be able to afford this shit, you know? There's mad money in New York City. That's the thing that's interesting. You go into some of these like luxury buildings past the doorman and get a glimpse into like a penthouse or something, you know, on the 32nd floor Midtown Manhattan, right? It's intimidating sometimes. Oh my God, that's where I am. It's a reality check. So I thought I was the shit, clearly not. <laughs> but it also kind of like spurs you on. You're like, okay, I can work towards something. It is four o'clock now. Okay, just got another order. It's $10, 43rd Street and 8th Avenue. Green blend. Pick up for Julia, yeah. got it. Now it's more or less rush hour and you can definitely see it. Look at that. Situational awareness overload. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. This is quintessential New York traffic. Right there, 331. All right, so that one's done. Yo, yo, just got a $10 tip on a $6 order. That's crazy. All right, so we're back at Madison Square. Because I don't have an order right now, I wanna show you guys something, which I think is very interesting. See this sculpture, William H. Seward. One of the things that people don't know is that the artist who created that sculpture was running out of time and running out of budget. And so instead of making the whole sculpture, he just made his head and then put the head on the body of Abraham Lincoln, which is why his head looks disproportionately small on that huge body. Ain't that interesting? You know, so far this gig is pretty good. There's a lot of flexibility with the job. Um, you can cancel an order when you want, but the issue with that is you can be very unproductive if you don't have self-control. Oh, I don't feel like doing this one. I don't feel like doing that one. I just want to sit at HQ and do nothing. So you really need to be able to schedule your time and have perseverance if you want to make any kind of real money. You can easily just spend your days and not have any sort of real return. Okay, we have the gnome with us. This is uh, David's first delivery. Okay, that's Dumpling Man. This is the best part of delivering with an assistant. The assistant <laughs> will watch your wheel. Right there, see? We got Tyler's food. All right, so another one dropped off. It's to a barber shop right there. Okay, cool. 505 now, basically a dinner rush. I have earned $79, 80 bucks so far. So one of the things I actually want to talk about is uh, this is not the kind of job that I usually do, right? I have a pretty cushy office job. So I tell people what to do. It's a very different kind of work situation than actually being out here in the elements, 40, 50 degree weather, you know, competing with traffic, all to earn a couple of bucks. Been basically out here the whole day. Look at my account, $80, you know? <laughs> Almost get hit by a cab and it's $7, no tip. It can be demoralizing sometimes. Some jobs are difficult because of the technical skills involved. Some jobs are difficult because you have to be emotionally tough. I think this is one of those, can't lose spirit. Yeah, I definitely did not expect that kind of difficulty going into this. Fun fact, see that red building? The red is a pigment that they mix into the concrete while they're pouring it. NYU contracted the quarry for that particular kind of rock that you grind down to make the red pigment. And then the quarry ran out of business because NYU was still in the middle of constructing buildings like that and like that. They just bought out the quarry. That's why they continued making red buildings.
You know, now that the sun has gone down, it's getting chilly. My hands especially, holding the food. This is why having a bag is important. I have uh, Chris's food. <laughs> the best reactions are uh, the reactions of little kids. Oh my God, it's a one wheel. Precious moment over. Let's go back to the grueling reality of delivering. I hate riding on the sidewalk. It's like the one sanctuary for pedestrians. People in New York can argue about, should you blow through a red? Should you ride on the highway? Should you do various dangerous activities on the wheel? But I think everyone would agree, you don't ride on the sidewalk. So I'm trying to minimize that as much as possible. So sorry I couldn't find you. Not at all, not at all. Thank you. So the dinner rush is real, man. Got another order, hub tie. Uh, this one's like 950 or something like that, which will take us over 100. Gabriel, thank you so much. I appreciate it, thank you. Um, the drop-off locations around Battery Park. You know, something that I really want to talk about. I've really enjoyed doing this. If you have a full-time job like me and you want to make a little money on the side, or you can actually do this as a full-time job and you can make a decent living, but the whole time delivering on the back of my mind, I have this insecurity, which is what would people say? What would my friends say if they saw me delivering? What happens if my coworkers see me? What happens if my future employers see me doing this? Maybe it's wrong to think that way. There are people making honest living doing deliveries and there's nothing wrong with it. But it's just, I feel like in some ways my reputation is in jeopardy. And I think part of the reason is because the odd one or two times that I felt like second class citizen. Hey, yeah, you can't come in through the front door. You have to go through the back. You gotta go through the service elevator. What are you doing in here? It's hard to reconcile the beliefs that, hey, this is an honest way of making a decent living. And what about my image, you know? I'm still struggling with that. We're on the East River bike lane, heading toward Battery Park. This is the Manhattan Bridge right here. This is Pier 17. It's very well known because of the pirate ships <laughs> that are parked there, that are docked. Southernmost tip of Manhattan. And this right here is the terminal for the Staten Island Ferry. So incredibly, the ferry is free, but it does, of course, have a schedule. So sometimes you have to wait for 45 minutes, an hour. The apartment that we're trying to get to is 1 West Street. Whenever you hear uh, one anything, that's expensive. Oh, geez, that's impressive. Look at this. Yeah. So it's a huge flight of stairs in front of this building. So this is a reason why I brought the kryptonite lock. not going anywhere. Gabriel, thank you. Whew. Yo, it's like the Sistine Chapel in here. That is crazy. Might as well be a museum in here instead of an apartment. This is what I mean. Yo, this is crazy. So that one was dropped off. Hope my wheel is still here. Yes. That made me break 100. 101.59. And I haven't received any new orders yet. I think on average over today, uh, my orders have been $7, $8. Part of me is frustrated because I want the big orders. The mentality that I have in my head to try to keep myself positive is to think about this like fishing. Once in a while you catch a big fish and once in a while you catch a little fish. There's money to be made, you just gotta be out here. Look at that gorgeous view, man. That right there is the One World Trade Center by SOM. Uh, it's eight o'clock now. We got another order for about 10 bucks. Gum Powder Cafe. This place got vibes. What? I'm picking up for brandy. Brandy's food. This food stinks. It's got that like fermented, greasy, artichoke smell to it. To each his own. I do want to 
check the battery percentage on my Sherman. Usually the range is so incredible that I actually don't bring a charger when I leave the apartment. And today's no different. We're at roughly 50%, having gone like 50 some odd miles. The range is pretty goddamn good, you know? <laughs> I just noticed something. The drop-off location is called Taj Lounge. In the notes it says, it's a club. Just drop the food off with the bouncer. <laughs> I hope I don't have to go through a club with my wheel. That would really suck. If I see big people frisking smaller people. That means we're in the right spot. Brandy, you're good? Okay, thank you. Ooh. So I got two orders. Uh, both are from Shake Shack. Laura and Edwin. I have to say one of the more enjoyable picking up experiences I've had. They're very professional in there. Okay, so we just go up 3rd Ave until we hit 26. See this guy, this is a true hardcore messenger. This is the delivery person of yesteryear. 330 East. I have a delivery. It's insane. My legs and my knees are sore. And my shoulders, oh my God. This is labor for you. Thank you. No problem. Have a good night. Edwin, you are next. We're back at the Stuyvesant area. So we've descended deep into the letters. See how dark it is? It's Avenue A, Avenue B, heading toward Avenue C. We might not make it out of here. But... Man. Oh, thank God. I see a number. First Avenue. Holy crap. Almost died. Almost died, Tyree. Here thank you go. You. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Edwin's taken care of. Yo, yo. That did it. $150.07. Thank God. I'm done for the night. That was way longer than I anticipated. Oh God. What are the stats? Full payout, $150.07 before all the tips come in. Total miles ridden, 64.7 miles. 11 hours ridden. Total battery remaining 45%. So almost 70 miles and still have 45% left. Crazy range on the Sherman. That's it for today. I mean, I don't know what else I can do. I am shot. I'm heading home. This is rough. My knees are tired. I can't bend my arm backwards to turn off the light on my backpack. I could this morning. This is no joke. The amount of strain that you put on your body and imagine doing this tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Honestly, I don't know how these guys do it. But anyway, this has been fun. It was an enjoyable, entertaining, eye-opening experience. This is Da signing out. Supreme burrito. Supreme burrito, baby.